In the world of OSPF, all routers are given a name. And that name is a number that is 32 bits long and written in dotted decimal. Let's take a look at one of our OSPF router names just so we can see. Yeah, it really does look like the IP address. And what we're going to see is that there's a set of logic that indicates how this is chosen. And we need to understand this in order to work successfully with some advanced OSPF router features, such as OSPF virtual links and OSPF route filtering. So firstly, we can explicitly indicate the router ID. So we can choose the router ID. And if we type in the router ID command and give it a value that is taken by the router, it will prefer that command and the value provided by that command over all else. Now let's say we have just set up network commands and set OSPF on it, it sent OSPF on its merry way. Then we don't have a router ID command yet. We need to configure this and if we don't, then we're gonna look for loopback interfaces. Now loopback interfaces are a really powerful kind of interface. They are always on, assuming we want them to be on. So if we do a show IP interface brief, this is a virtual interface. It doesn't go anywhere. It is not present on the chassis. So it's not bound to the physical realm. And because it's not bound to the physical realm, then we are not worried about whether there's something plugged into it or if there's a hardware failure. And so this is a really stable kind of interface. And the OSPF designers decided, hey, if there's a loopback interface, we want to prefer whatever IP addresses are on that loopback interface for the purpose of router ID selection. And what we'll do is we'll look at the highest available IP address on a loopback interface. Now, I don't want you to think that the interface number plays a role here. The interface number does not play a role. What matters is the IP address on that interface. So we're going to look for the highest IP address on the active loopback interfaces, and they're more likely to be active than any other interface because they're virtual. And the only way they're off really is if we do a shutdown command. And so we're going to, in the absence of a router ID command, prefer loopback interfaces and the highest IP address on them. Now, if we don't have any loopback interfaces, then we'll go to any other interface that is present on the router that is active and that has, a high, that has an IP address. And we're gonna look for the highest IP address on the chassis. We'll use that, but we only get there if we don't have a router ID and we don't have a loopback interface. So if we were to come here and we were to look at this router, are we following the, the rules? So if we do a show run section OSPF, do we have a router ID? No, we do not. No, or do we have the router ID command? So what then happens is we look for the existence of a loopback interface. And if we have an IP address on a loopback interface, we'll choose that value, assuming it's the highest. And in fact, we can see that the OSPF operation is properly confirmed. I did a show IP protocols and we saw that was the router ID. And it was the router ID because, hey, that is an IP address on a loopback interface, so that has preferential treatment.